What is up everybody and welcome back to the Slacks YouTube channel. Today we are sticking with the Pokemon Unite videos going over the overall tier list after the first official launch of Pokemon Unite. Uh, I've been playing a lot of Pokemon Unite with some friends including lots and lots of ranked um, so I figured it was a good time to jump into a Pokemon Unite tier list coming from somebody who plays many many MOBA genre games and um, we're just going to run with it. Uh, the way I'm going to structure this video today is I'm going to be going over all the specific class types within the game and ranking it based on that, um, not specifically based on uh, each individual character. Um, obviously, each individual character will have a little bit, um, we'll, we'll tweak my opinion a little bit, um, but I'm going to be going over it based on the attacker, the speedster, the support, the tank alongside the all-arounder. Um, so I'm not going to be having a lot of um, repetitive people in repetitive um, classes from S to D. Um, obviously there will be some overlapping, but I think this is the best way to structure it just so that people know, um, depending on what um, class type they want to play, what in my opinions are of the best po Pokemon in that type. And I think we're just going to jump in like that. Um, I also want to say before this video begins, thank you guys uh, for subscribing and following my other Dota 2 videos. Um, they've been doing quite well recently and there will be a lot more coming in the upcoming months uh, closer to when TI comes out. So definitely pop, pop back in when those videos will be released. All right, so let's jump on into it. Obviously, uh, Clefable and Blastoise have not been released yet, so I'm going to be leaving those away. And I'm just going to be going over it one by one, starting off with the Attacker class. Um, all right, so we are going to be starting off with the Attacker class, and we're starting off with Venusaur, which for me is a very easy C tier. Um, I'm putting C as the lowest tier list for this. Um, obviously, I've seen other tier lists where they have like a D and E tier. Um, I'm just keeping it very simple with uh, the S, A+, plus, A, B+, plus, B, and C. And obviously, they're not available, which is Clefable. Sorry, Cl yeah, Clefable and uh, Blastoise. So, Venusaur, um, one of the more cooler Pokemon, I think. A lot of the starter Pokemon, um, obviously, a lot of people want to try out. They're very invested in. Obviously, if you are a OG Pokemon fan like myself, watching Pokemon back in 1996 and onwards, um, you're going to want to use this, the original, the Pokemon Season 1 starters, but unfortunately Venusaur is just not very good. Um, doesn't have the highest damage output in terms of an attacker, um, and has very, very low mobility. Um, one thing that I want to go over in this video is mobility is very key right now in Pokemon Unite. Um, obviously, eject button being like a small flash or blink is something that's very beneficial in the game. And if your character just has built-in speed mechanics, it's very, very strong. Um, unfortunately, Venusaur doesn't really have one the best buffs based on the two abilities, and the ultimate isn't necessarily the strongest uh, ultimate ability or the unite ability as they call it in this game. Um, so I'm putting Venusaur at a uh, C tier um, in terms of, of an attacker. Uh, I definitely could see Venusaur getting some buffs, but as of right now, we don't really know the structure of how the game will be going. Um, we're only one weekend, as I mentioned before, so we'll, we'll see how Venusaur kind of adapts later on. Um, again, I also also want to reiterate this is on my personal opinions if you play Venusaur and you are very good at playing Venusaur and you play Venusaur to a, um, a higher level um, by all means um, that's that's great but in terms of an all-around experience in the game there's other Pokemon that I just feel are better um, and these are 100% my personal opinions on these so please do not attack me in the comments if you disagree with uh, where my list is right now um, jumping on to the next attacker, Gardevoir, who is the most recent uh, release in Pokemon Unite. Um, I'm putting Gardevoir at like a B plus. Um, I definitely think Gardevoir has decent mechanics, but they have not been implemented greatly enough yet as she is very, very recently new. She's only been out for one day from the uploading or sorry, from the recording of this video. So um, I think her, um, her abilities and her bonuses and her buffs are very, very strong. Um, her ultimate is um, pretty strong um, and she has a lot of very good zoning uh, opportunities being kind of more of a ranged caster, uh, caster-ish kind of type Pokemon. Um, I want to see how good that she can get based on that she is a lot newer in terms of the structure of the game right now. And we've seen that, like I said, mobility is kind of key right now in the game and like heavy burst is very strong. Uh, but we'll see how like a more caster heavy uh, Pokemon kind of um, erupts in the meta later on. 
um, with is like kind of the two minute Zapdos power buff as a lot of people have been talking about. I don't know how good she is in that sense as um, she has decent zoning tools, but I don't think she's ad good, as good as like a Pokemon like Ninetales. So that obviously puts her lower down in the tier list. Um, but yeah, I'm going to keep her at a B, B plus. I think that's pretty respectable for, uh, for Gardevoir. Uh, going on to Greninja, I'm going to put Greninja at an A tier. The reason I put Greninja in an A tier, I think he's very skill intensive. He's not the, necessarily the easiest Pokemon to use, um, but I do think his overall skill set is, if you master it, is very, very easy. Um, one thing I do want to say too is even a Pokemon that shows as an expert class or as an expert difficulty in playing, that doesn't necessarily mean you won't know how to play it easily. Um, for a lot of people that do play games like League of Legends or Heroes of the Storm or Dota 2, um, expert characters in this game are very easy to make or look sorry very strong so um i think gardevoir or not gardevoir greninja is in that like more expert tier class of um playability so um overall i think i'm just gonna put him in a i haven't seen all too many greninjas as of recently either uh, but i've seen a lot of people on youtube and in other youtube uh youtube creators that play a lot of greninja and i do think that greninja will be uh very good in terms of the long run of the game um now we're jumping into uh, Cinderace. I'm putting Cinderace at an A+. Um, I don't think there's going to be too many Pokemon that are going to hit the S tier, but Cinderace is very, very close to it. Um, insanely strong auto attack damage. She's basically like an AD carry in terms of like uh, a League of Legends perspective. She does a lot of damage and is very fast and is able to rotate quickly around the map. Your early game is a little bit weaker, but the buffs that you get later on in the game especially uh especially the ultimate um just allows you to kind of break down team fights very very easily and you're not using too many things that are very like skill in uh, intensive it's a lot of just base auto attacking movement speed and um very easy to hit uh skill shots so i'm gonna put cinderace at an a plus if you see like a late game cinderace that has levels on you it's very very hard to take cinderace down based on the fact that they attack very fast they have very decent range and her ultimate is very very good so i'm gonna put cinderace at an a plus tier we're jumping in to the fish bird um these are one of those scenarios where i do have to have a little bit overlapping um personal opinion if there was like an a minus i'd probably put a minus but i'm gonna put him at a b plus uh i think the pokemon is pretty strong not necessarily the strongest early to uh, mid game has a very good late game ultimate is also very strong the only unfortunate thing is um in terms of like if you know league of legends Zareth alt is very similar to um the uh I, I call him i call him fish bird but his ultimate is very similar to that but it auto targets so you don't have to hit the skill shot but it leaves you standing still which uh in my in my personal games in my personal opinion in my ranked and in my normal games when this pokemon stands still you instantly can kill him um i play a lot of zero aura a lot of speedster characters so when i ever see uh, anybody playing this character it is very easy for me to abuse it in terms of ways to rush it down so uh i think there's honestly a lot of possibility of this pokemon being good if you have a decent comp around it but in terms of like a solo queue and in, uh, intensive game the pokemon might not be the best way to kind of win the game so i'm gonna put him at a, at a b plus pikachu um i'm putting pikachu at a b uh, i think pikachu is very strong in i think pikachu is very strong in terms of um, being able to immobilize characters and have a lot of CC, but the consistent damage is not great with Pikachu and Pokemon that are again, very mobile can kill a Pikachu very easily. Uh, I think it's, it's kind of hard to put Pikachu in a specific spot because I've seen Pikachu's pop off do really well when they're ahead, but they also do very poorly when they're behind. I just think Pikachu's overall skill set is pretty easy. It's pretty generic. So for a new newcomer player, they can abuse the character to be really good. But I don't really see Pikachu being all that great without an ultimate or your Unite ability. So I'm going to put uh, Pikachu at a B tier. So Ninetales has to be S. Uh, I think Ninetales has probably the best skill set in terms of an attacker. Has very good range, a very good passive, alongside an incredibly strong ult that has an immense, immense amount of range. Uh, I think Ninetales is just like... There's not really... There's no downside from Ninetales, maybe mobility again, but nine times out of ten when you're playing Ninetales, you freeze and immobilize a lot of characters um, if you take the correct builds. You also have a wall. If you take the Avalanche build, you also wall off. 
um, which is super, super strong in terms of like uh, disorganizing like a team in a team fight. So um, Ninetales is just one of the best characters in the game right now. I don't think there's any Pokemon that does anything as good as Ninetales um, in that sense. So I think that's pretty much it in terms of that. Um, I noticed Cat. Uh, in my chat, he said, Cram is either godly or garbage. Depends on player. No between. I, and I, I have to agree 100% with that um, in terms of the attacker, overall attackers. Uh, I Again, I think this this is pretty generic in terms of a lot of people's uh, opinions on attackers right now. Maybe you could argue Cinderace is like an S tier based on the damage. Um, but overall, I think this is a good start to uh, my opinion on the attackers. Uh, now we're going to jump in to the speedster role. Gengar is probably the strongest, if not one of the strongest Pokemon in the game right now. Um, I am a Gengar Sludge Hex player. I'm not going to lie. I think Gengar is really good. I got Gengar, I think, the second day of playing the game, and I think his overall skill set is insane. He has very high blow-up potential. Um, his ultimate allows him to be very mobile, and the Sludge Hex combo is probably one of the most annoying ways to kill a pokemon in the game it does very very high damage with very little uh downside to the pokemon um i guess you could say the speedster rule early game for um gengar is a little bit slow um but if you are playing a speedster rule and you're able to farm up your jungle pretty consistently you are able to destroy the game coming out with a lot of levels once you hit the haunter phase and you are able to hex sludge bomb you can do insane amount of damages um at, at level uh what is it seven plus so or six plus so um gengar easily choice has to be s tier um in terms of absol so absol is also in that range of like an a and b i'm probably gonna put absol probably a tier um this one i'm a little bit biased on because i think absol is a very good pokemon doesn't do necessarily the things as good as gengar in terms of damage but is very fast on the map and can gank very heavily um so your rotations are very very good um i would say absol uh, is kind of player dependent. That's why I put her a little bit lower down on the tier list. I'd like an A, um, A or even like an A minus. Um, but overall, I think she is a good speedster. She could be a little bit better, but in terms of the, I think what is it, four speedsters that are in the game, I'm gonna put her at an A tier just to stay safe. Um, jumping to Talonflame, I think this is a pretty easy C. Uh, Talonflame does not have good CC. Um, ultimate is not necessarily the greatest thing. It has decent amount of damage, but it zones your your own self away from the fights, which is a big negative in terms of this game because you want to fight a lot of the times in clumps, close together. Um, the skill set for Talonflame isn't necessarily that great. Um, the like nuke, like the dive bomb nuke, is pretty good in terms of damage. But if you don't have characters that have good CC, and when you play good players that have eject button, Talonflame just gets minimized way too hard. You kind of just lose a lot of your um, your overall damage output when you play against better players. And without CC, this game is very hard to maintain kills without uh, CC. So I'm going to put him at a, at a, at a C tier. Um, the last speedster, Zara Aura, goes right beside Gengar in S. Um, Zara Aura damage is immaculate. Um, I play a lot of Zara, as I mentioned. I am a filthy uh, tier list scrub, so I play a lot of tier list characters. But I think Zara Aura's damage is insane. You're very fast on the map, you have very high damage ceilings, and your ultimate is very good in team fights. Anything that gives you kind of like a bonus damage within a team fight is pretty strong in any game. And when Zara has that, especially with your ultimate that does a base damage amount, um, a lot of the times you win a lot of fights. Um, Zara's build is also pretty good. I believe it's, is it Spark or is it Charge? And the jump ability, um, either one, I think it's Volt Switch or uh, the other one. But I think either uh, any of the talents that you take on him are pretty good. Um, if you want to see some very good Zera uh, games, go check out my stream again, Twitch.tv. I play a lot of Gengar and a lot of Zera, obviously. And uh, I, yeah, I just think Zera is pretty strong in the meta right now. There's not really any downsides to Zera. Maybe it's in terms of like getting picked off or if you kind of go too hard you kind of die but the damage is always amplified like you always have crazy amounts of damage with all your abilities um especially like a like a mini like a little bit of a mini stun if you take the one um our ability i can't remember what it's called but overall um i think that's pretty pretty well represented for the speedster class uh, we're gonna jump into the two supports there's only two of them right now so uh, i'm gonna start off with mr mime i'm gonna put mr mime at uh Again, personal opinion, it would probably be like an A-. I'm going to put him at a B+, um, just because I think this character 
will have a higher skill ceiling the higher players that you play against. But when you play against like people that aren't understanding of how the character can be utilized, it goes down a little bit. Um, Mr. Mime Ultimate is very, very strong. You have a lot of very good zone with the wall. Um, pretty decent damage output if you're able to hit uh, through the wall. I can't remember what the exact ability is. Um, and the stun is pretty decent, but it, 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 it's very hard to depict where you put this character based on the skill ceiling. Um, that's why I put him in a B plus. Um, Eldegoss, I'm going to put at A+. Uh, I've seen a lot of Eldegosses, some very bad, some very good. But when you see a very good Eldegoss that knows how to play with a team, um, if you have an Eldegoss that is able to play with a carry very well, your Eldegoss is very, very strong. Um, Eldegoss Ultimate, obviously very good. Um, I just think Eldegoss right now with only two supports being around, there's really no... Um, the value of playing Eldegoss is so high based on the fact that She's the highest healing support character in the game right now and can easily be played with a team. If you are stacking in this game, which I will admit is very broken, but if you five stack or three stack or whatever, four stack with one person playing Eldegoss, um, nine times out of 10, I think you're going to win if your team is coordinated and you're, you know how to play the game at like a semi-competitive level. So I'm going to put Eldegoss at a A+. Snorlax, uh, we're going to jump into the tanks. So Snorlax, I'm putting Snorlax at an S. I'm going to put it behind Nine Tails in terms of like who I think the best character is. I'm actually going to move this around. Uh, Snorlax, um, very good CC, very good abilities. If you have a team that plays very very well around it, it is very hard to kill a Snorlax. Uh, as I just mentioned, Eldegoss and Snorlax is a very good combo. Um, Snorlax has very good CC, a pretty decent ultimate, the wall, as a lot of people like to use. And I just think Snorlax is like your very generic tank but being generic sometimes isn't always bad uh, and i think that's why i put him in like an s tier there's nothing really that fancy about him but he's just the biggest body on the game right now and that's why i put him at an s tier uh Krussel, i'm gonna put Krussel at an a tier i think Krussel is good um i think he's a little bit too slow to be justifiable uh eject button is kind of like your best friend on Krussel. if you don't have eject button then you're kind of a little bit uh held back based on your character um not the biggest damage output not the best necessary cc with x scissor unless you're hitting someone into a wall the ultimate is pretty good but um if you're taking it in terms of my personal opinion snorlax just does what Krussel does way better and that's why i put Krussel at an a tier um wiggly tough uh, I think Wigglytuff's... I'm going to put Wigglytuff at a B. Um, I think Wigglytuff's abilities are not that good. Rollout is not necessarily the greatest uh, ability. Uh, the slap doesn't have the best damage output, doesn't have the best CC. Uh, I just think Wigglytuff just gets beaten too much by Snorlax and Crustle in terms of being able to be a, a tanky body on the game. And that's why I put uh, Wigglytuff so low at, at a B tier. Uh, I definitely don't think the character is bad by any means. The ultimate is okay. Um, I think the sing mechanic in terms of like the way that you can uh, stun people or uh, put CCs as they call it on a Pokemon is kind of bad. It doesn't really... It, it takes too long to maximize the efficiency of it. So... I'm going to keep a Wigglytuff at C or at B tier. Uh, Slowbro, I'm going to put B plus, I think. I think it's, I mean, there's really not much to say about Slowbro. I think it's better than Wigglytuff, but it's still pretty bad. It has better CCs, and that's why I put it one step up. I just think Krustle's a little bit better at being able to be a harder body to kill. Um, I think Slowbro uh, kind of puts himself in bad instances with Surf, and I think Krustle is just a hard, again, a harder person to kill. Uh, Slowbro definitely has better m movement abilities in terms of a tank, similar to Snorlax, but I just think uh, he's he's better than Wigglytuff, but not better than Krustle overall. And finally, we're jumping into the all-around Pokemon. So we're going to start off with Garchomp. I'm going to put Garchomp at a... Hmm, I'm trying to think. I'm going to put Garchomp at a b tier i think no i'm gonna put garchomp b, b plus um i think garchomp's good uh you definitely see a lot of garchomps pop off if they are good at the game and are maximizing the efficiency in terms of damage output alongside with um being a good like frontliner similar to like a tank or like a position three in league or dota uh, i think garchomp does a lot of things well when you have your ultimate and is able to do quite a bit of damage i am putting him a little bit lower based on personal opinion and the lack of me seeing a lot of Garchomps in my games. Um, a lot of times, if if you are playing an all-arounder, you're playing Lucario or Machamp, which I will get to very shortly. But uh, I don't really see a lot of Garchomp. But when I do see them, I think they do really well. The early game, as most all-arounders, are not great. But I think his early game is a little bit worse 
when Pokemon like Lucario have a lot of mobility alongside Machamp who has uh, very good um, CC and sustain abilities with like bulk up and uh, uh, what is it called like submission and stuff like that. So I'm going to leave Garchomp at a B plus. Uh, Lucario, I think that's a very easy A plus. Um, I think I think Lucario, um, in terms of skill, takes a lot of skill to maximize the efficiencies on him. Um, in terms of mo because he has high mobility, um, but has very good damage. The ultimate lacks a little bit. I think it takes too long to get off. But I think if you are a good Lucario player, you can definitely abuse the game by showing that you uh, are a very high, uh, very high tier player. But the uh, the Pokemon overall, I'm going to leave at an A plus just because of the fact that I don't think it hits that like upper echelon of damage output. Um, but does have a lot of uh, other ways to maximize its efficiency on the map. So uh, Lucario at an A plus. Uh, that, uh, like again, people might think that Lucario's S tier, and that's completely fine. It's very hard to determine. Um, but again, this is just my personal opinions. Um, Charizard. I'm putting Charizard at a B tier. I know my boy JP, who has been playing a lot of uh, a lot of Charizard games with me. He he has mentioned he is a Charizard one trick. Um, I will link his stuff in the description down below so you guys can go check him out when uh, me and him play some Pokemon Unite together. Uh, I just think Charizard's early game isn't great. If you Once you do hit Charizard, you do do quite a bit of damage. Ultimate is pretty good. Uh, I think the damage output on it is kind of bad, but it has a very good CC ability. Um, I just think the negatives of the early game, once being um, Charmander and Charmeleon, uh, kind of just put it down because you don't have one, you don't have great CC. And your damage output isn't great if people just walk out of the uh, the fire ring. So um, the auto attack too um, sometimes messes you up a lot. So I just wish they maybe they would have changed his autos to like a more like a ranged auto attack similar um, similar to like a nine tails I guess. Uh, but I mean it is what it is. Um, the fire breath just kind of puts you back based on how low your auto attack base is you have to be right on top of a pokemon when you're hitting it which kind of sucks if you don't have any cc on you so that's why i'm gonna leave charizard at a b tier all right so machamp i'm putting machamp s i think machamp is really good i think people underrate machamp a lot um your early levels is very hard to kill you with bulk up um and you have a very decent base tank stat line uh, you are very hard to kill when you have um, unstoppables like submission, um, especially with a big damaging ultimate that can zone your team very, very well. So I'm going to put Machamp at an S. Uh, I think it's, is it X Strike? Um, I can't remember the exact name, but the mobility that allows you to j dive pretty deep is a very low cooldown and it allows you to be very mobile. And submission, being able to pick one target out and kind of pull him back to your team is very, very strong. Um, I think he's better than Lucario just based on the fact that his damage output is a little bit higher. I would say Lucario is more of a mobile all-arounder, but I just like how Machamp's Unstoppable and his early game are stronger than Lucario's. Um, so that's why I'm putting Machamp at an S tier. Um, I personally, like I said, play a lot of speedsters, but I would say um, Zera, uh, Gengar, Ninetales, and Machamp are probably my four most played as of right now. Um, but I, again, I have watched a lot of other, uh, Pokemon Unite tier lists, so I'm not biased. I think, uh, my tier list, um, is different from a couple other people's opinions overall. Um, but I think I did a pretty good job of separating as much as possible each specific character from each specific role. Um, and again, we'll definitely see, uh, what will happen once, uh, Clefable and Blastoise come out. And I'm very excited to continue playing. Uh, again, I stream a lot of Pokemon Unite as of recently on uh, twitch.tv slash slacks. So make sure to pop on in and uh, come watch me and my boys uh, grind up some ranks in Pokemon Unite. Um, thank you guys again for watching. Please let me know what you guys think about my Pokemon Unite tier list in the descript or in the in the comment section down below. Sorry, and uh, check everything out in the comment section in, in terms of uh, some sponsors alongside the other people that I had mentioned in today's video. Thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for a lot more Dota 2, Heroes of the Storm, and Pokemon Unite videos to come. And again, thank you guys again so much for watching. Peace out.